am the director of the Cypress University Alliance Program, and I want to talk a, a little bit about low-cost platforms for EE education. Of course, I work for Cypress and have for almost 12 years, so I'm going to talk about Cypress kits and not uh, NXP kits or microchip kits, which I'm sure are very fine kits. Um, what I want to uh, do uh, first is kind of set the stage because Cypress has changed uh, dramatically over the 12 years I've been there, but never more dramatically in the last 18 months. Uh, in the last 18 months, Cypress has merged with a company called Spansion, which was a, uh, uh, originally a partnership between uh, Advanced Micro Devices and Fujitsu, and uh, that brought us all kinds of flash memory products as well as uh, Cortex-M series microcontrollers. And then um, July of 2016, we acquired Broadcom's IoT business unit. So um, uh, that, that, was, that was a really big deal. I like to think of uh, before, um, before Broadcom, we had the T in IoT, so we had all the things, but now with the Broadcom acquisition, we, we got the internet as well. And so where, where has that brought Cypress? That's brought Cypress to really be a global embedded uh, leader, leader in global embedded systems. And you can see here that our target applications, um, automotive is a third of our business now. Clusters and you, you all are aware of driver, you know, the driverless cars and the, the silicon, um, amount of silicon that's in the automotive uh, industry and in automobiles is just exploding. And so it's a business, uh, one of Cypress's goals is to be in businesses that are growing faster than the norm. It's like following the S&P 500 and you want to grow five or ten times faster than the S&P 500. And so that's, so, so we have basically three main businesses, which is automotive, consumer, and industrial. Okay? So that kind of sets the stage. And what my job is, is to uh, work with you and universities and to uh, get uh, Cypress Tech used in uh, every engineering program where it makes sense in the universe. And uh, I've been there, as I said, almost 12 years and happy to report that uh, we've gone from zero to 1,200, actually 1,220 schools participating in the, in the program in some ways using Cypress either in, in uh, classes that are in the syllabus in senior projects, in some sort of research. Um, so um, we hope that if your school is not already participating, that you will be participating uh, soon. And um, by the way, before I forget, I have a table out in the lobby, so any of these kits that I talk about, if you want to you know, come later today or tomorrow, um, you can see them in uh, three, three dimensions. Um, this is our website. So down where the circle is where it says download form, that is where you would uh, request evaluation kits. Uh, I can talk about that more outside later. And one of our major um, products is uh, PSOC, or Programmable System on Chip. So this is what really put us on the map in the embedded world. The first big design win was actually the original Apple iPod. Um, and, and the, the PSOC 1 was in there. Uh, but what is PSOC, Programmable System on Chip? It is uh, basically at a high level, it's three components. It's a, some Cortex-M microcontroller, could be M0, M0+, M3, M4. It is programmable digital logic and it is uh, analog. So there's actual op amps and comparators, DACs and, and uh, ADCs in there. Um, and so most of the kits I'm going to talk about are uh, PSOC based because they lend themselves so well to education for one thing. Um, so the first uh, kit is a, uh, a stamp board and when you see the package, the reason we call these stamp boards is because they're literally a postcard size. You can put a stamp on them and mail them to somebody. Um, and this is a uh, Cortex M3 based kit that has uh, 24 uh, user uh, digital blocks, which universal digital blocks, which are basically our term for the programmable digital fabric. If you're familiar with Xilinx, those are uh, CLBs, and Altera calls them LABs, and everybody has their own, own acronym, and ours is UDB. Uh, this has four op amps. It's got uh, a Dell SIG ADC, and it's got two SAR ADCs, 
and it also has switch capacitor networks, which are very, very useful, and you can make a lot of different things once you learn how to, how, how to use them. They're, they're quite simple to use, but they can also be very sophisticated. And uh, one of the demos I have is a, a, a oscilloscope that we've built in this $10 kit. It's a two-channel oscilloscope with a waveform generator. And um, again, if you want to know more about that, I can, I can talk about it uh, uh, outside and show you the demo. Then we have a, the M series uh, kits, and we have a couple of kits in that area. One is a stamp board. Uh, the thing about the M series, uh, it has an M0 controller at 48 megahertz. It has a real-time clock. It has direct memory access and two controller area network blocks. So uh, if any of you are involved directly with automotive, you're well aware that the CAN bus is very important. And uh, it's, it's like USB. It started for one purpose, but now the CAN bus is used in robotics, is used in factory automation, and many different places. And so you will... Uh, um, you know, having a, having a CAN bus there is uh, very useful. Uh, but again, particularly if your students go to automotive uh, uh, companies after they graduate. And then this is the very same chip, but this is the Pioneer kit. And what I want to talk about the Pioneer kit is, first of all, obviously it's got a different form factor. It's pretty much an Arduino form factor. But what it has uh, also, oops, what it has also is, oh, I went, pressed the wrong button here. What it has also is um, some bells and whistles in terms of it's got a cap sense, capacitive sensing gesture pad. It's got um, PWM, PWM temperature sensor. It's got um, some RAM for data logging. It's got an accelerometer, Raspberry Pi connector. And, um, and so on. And so mechanical engineering students really like this kit because it's got a lot of sensors on it already. And they, uh, they don't have to worry about how do I hook up the sensors. They can just go ahead and start using the sensors. So uh, again, I've had a lot of success with mechanical engineering programs with this particular kit. Um, and again, you can see they're all very um, affordable for students, much less than a textbook, if you consider a textbook affordable for students. <laughs> and this is the original Pioneer kit, the original PSOC 4. Um, it has a capacitive, uh, capacitive sense slider. It's got an RGB LED. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but all of the Pioneer kits have these Arduino compatible, shield compatible headers. So if you're using Arduino and you have some shields, you can plug them right into any of these Pioneer kits. They will not. Uh, uh, blow up or burn out because VCC and ground is in the correct place. Of course, you still have to program the uh, Pioneer or the PSOC chip to do whatever you want the shield to do. But um, that is uh, uh, very good. And another um, feature that we, or benefit, I guess, is that we have a association with ARM. Of course, all of our um, kits uh, have ARM uh, one sort of it, one or another of the ARM cores, and um, we've done uh, some lab in a box, three of them actually, and this is the first one, and they're all essentially the same in that ARM will give you a hundred Kyle licenses for free, Cypress will send you ten of the kits for free, and ARM will provide a full suite of academic. Uh, teaching lab and lecture materials for free. And by full suite, it's a semester's worth, basically. And if you go to university at arm.com, because they refer you to me, uh, because they own the lecture materials, um, and obviously they own the Kyle software as well, uh, you can get, again, you can get the uh, lecture materials, the licenses, um, and so on for free. And so I, I mentioned about the Broadcom acquisition, and this is really what it brought Cypress. So we had Bluetooth Low Energy before the acquisition, but with Broadcom, as I mentioned, we got the I in the IoT. We got Wi-Fi, we got Bluetooth, we got Zigbee, and um, so now we really have a full soup to nuts IoT solution, regardless of whether you want to, you know, 
Do you want to use BLE? Do you want to use Wi-Fi? Uh, and so on. We have a kit that, that does that. And we also have some kits or some chips that are combo. So um, I have one with me now that ha is a combination Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, on one chip. So um, there's lots of different combinations and uh, we pretty much do anything that makes sense in that area. Uh, and the area, of course, is IoT. So I, I kind of think of IoT, the term, as kind of an ideology because it's what is IoT? I could ask each one of you in this room what it is. You would all have an opinion. It would all probably be in the same ballpark and you would all be correct because we don't, IoT is not complete yet. And as I tell students, when I'm doing workshops and things, I'm, I'm a little jealous of them because they are actually going to be the people who, who figure out what IoT is as they begin their careers. Uh, because in the next five, five to ten years, you know, we will have a definition of what IoT is. We will know what it is, uh, I believe. Um, but you can see that it's, however you define it, and you know, there's a lot of people, Cisco says uh, 10 billion units and Gartner says, which is a data firm, um, says 20 billion units, and it doesn't really matter if the number's right. All we know is it's a big number. It's a big number. And uh, what we're looking at uh, from, from our data, we think by the end of next year, there will, in 2019, 1.6 billion units will ship. Um, and this is in terms of chips that have, uh, that Cypress ships to customers. And again, you can see there, it's the um, consumer, machine-to-machine uh, -machine and uh, automotive uh, uh, play, uh, markets that we're focusing on. This is uh, the kit. Some of you who were at the workshop on Monday will recognize this kit. We did a workshop on it. And it's actually a two-chip solution. So it has um, a BLE radio in a package called Easy BLE, which is basically a microcontroller to run the radio and a UART um, and an ADC and then um, on the front, where it says PSOC 4000S, that is the actual PSOC chip that uh, uh, does a lot. And so, you know, again, it's really affordable solutions that when you and I were in school, if these solutions were available, they would have cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. And now, um, uh, for, you know, now they're just very affordable, and, and, and uh, uh, I'm very happy to see that, as a matter of fact, um, because it increases the possibility of educating more and more people for, for less money. Um, this is our original Bluetooth low energy kit with the PSOC 4. Uh, you see the two modules here. Uh, one is a PSOC 4 BLE module, which is a fully, you know, full, uh, fully featured PSOC, four op amps, uh, memory, um, 12 UDBs in this case. Um, and the black module is a P-Rock, so again, that does not have the op amps and, and other things, and it's meant for more, less sophisticated applications like mice and remote controls. Whereas with the red board there, you can do things like medical devices, um, biomed, and, and that kind of thing. And, and they connect up here for programming, and that can be thought of either as a, just a programmer, because uh, one, they're non-volatile once you take them off, you give them power and they do what they were programmed to do. Or it also can be considered a baseboard because it's got um, some RGB LEDs and cap sense and of course the ever popular Arduino compatible, uh, shield compatible headers. And then the dongle at the bottom is uh, um, a dongle that you can plug into any PC and you turn it into a BLE enabled PC. So when we first came out with this a couple of years ago, that was probably very useful, but I would, uh, I haven't done a research, but I would think that most um, mid-price PCs you get today, they will already have a BLE radio. So, um, but that is there if you need it. And again, this is the second one, uh, lab in a box. So this is called efficient embedded system design. Um, the same deal as uh, the previous one with the licenses, 10 kits from Cyprus and a semester's worth of lecture and academic materials from ARM. And our newest member of the PSOC family is PSOC 6 BLE, and I wanna spend a little more time on this. I'm not gonna go over the, the kit uh, extensively, 
But I do want to talk about the device because it's kind of a new paradigm in the, in the world of IoT or at least for in, the, in the world of PSOC. And what that is is the fact that it actually is a multi-core engine. It has a Cortex-M4 capable of running at 150 megahertz, and that handles, uh, there's some cryptography, that's where you've got some ADCs and UDBs and DACs, pulse width modulators, and what you would use that for is your, when you need high performance. You can put an RTOS in it, you can do sensor analytics, um, it's got voice capture, so it's got a PDM uh, microphone capabilities, and it's um, 30 microamps per megahertz power consumption. So the two things that we try to do with this PSOC 6 is uh, low power and security. And speaking of security, that's part of what the Cortex-M0 Plus does. In addition to running the uh, BLE radio stack, there are, there's a security handshake, for example, on wake up, and if the Cortex-M0 Plus doesn't get the right response back from the Cortex-M4, it just shuts the system down. So you have, um, um, and it's only got two power modes. It's got low power and ultra low power. So I mean, it, it, it's really serious about, uh, it, 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 there's no medium or high power. Um, so this is our latest chip, and we currently have two kits out. The one that I just showed you is the BLE version, and we have another kit out where the chip has a dual radio, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. And that's not BLE, it's Bluetooth, what we call Bluetooth Classic these days. Um, so we have two kits, and uh, again, you can come see them outside later if you're interested. So moving away from PSOC, so everything I talked about, first of all, was PSOC, and it gets programmed with PSOC Creator Software. Now um, this was an offering that came to us through the Broadcom acquisition and um, is programmed with something called Wicked Software, or you can use Kyle or, or IAR or other commercially available tools. Um, but this is basically a module that has a microcontroller and Wi-Fi in it. Um, it's also got Ethernet. Um, you can see the antennas on the board, but there's also a place where you can plug in some additional antennas, and it actually turns off the antennas that are on the board so there's no uh, crosstalk or, or conflict there. Um, and of course, you've got the Arduino-compatible headers. They're, they're uh, almost necessary these days. And um, again, you have Ethernet, and the, there's a Phi chip uh, right on the board there uh, next to the Cypress logo. And then this is an offering that came to us from Spansion. Uh, and it happens to be really good for educational purposes because it is a Cortex M4 microcontroller. It's not a PSOC, so it doesn't have programmable digital or programmable analog. It's got ADCs. It's got PWMs, but it also has DSP capabilities. It says Mac and Accumulate, and there's also a Wolfson uh, audio codec on the kit, so you can do a lot of uh, audio DSP just with this one kit. It also happens to have um, USB client and host interfaces, um, other things, uh, ambient light sensor, um, various memory chips from Cypress so that you can uh, uh, data log and and, and uh, that kind of thing. And then you also have an Ethernet interface um, and a Phi chip right on there. And the reason I talk about this is because, again, we have a deal with ARM. Um, same deal as before. The only thing that's different is what the uh, lab materials are and what the, what the kits are. But uh, a little furthermore, the person who wrote this material for ARM is Donald Ray, who is at Harriet Watt uh, University. And, um, he also wrote this book for Wiley, and basically the lab materials uh, and lecture materials are based on his book. And you can get, um, not only probably you can get a complimentary copy of the book from, uh, from Wiley, but there are also labs for this kit up on the Wiley website. So um, you really have a, a very easy entree into uh, DSP with the Cortex-M4 with this kit and the uh, book and the lecture material from ARM combination. Make you, if you're looking for a change or if you're looking to start a DSP program. So um, in summary, I just wanna say, first of all, thank you for this opportunity to talk uh, with you. But you know, Cypress has world-class technology in a variety of areas, microcontrollers, USB, and memory. 
Uh, my job is to make this uh, technology available to you in the education uh, arena, and I'm happy to do that. And um, we have a website, cypress.com slash CUA for Cypress University Alliance. And we have a meal, uh, email address, CUA at cypress.com. So, and again, just a reminder that I do have a table outside uh, if you want to talk about details about uh, any of these kits or the program, and I'll be happy to do that. So with that, I'll thank you very much.